China's leader and the United Nations Supreme Commander for Southeast Asia, Generalissimo Chung Kai-shek and Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten with Madam Chung meet to discuss allied strategy in this important theater of war. In an American-made jeep, Madam Chung accompanies her husband, recently elected president of China, to inspect units of China's armies now mobilizing for attack. Sworn to hurl the invader from China, Chiang Kai-shek places in the hands of his veterans the future of their homeland. Even as he speaks, American transports are flying guns and ammunition to a Chinese army fighting in the jungles of North Burma. Dropping supplies by parachute, they reach in a matter of hours an objective that would take days of travel by land. American trained, these Chinese units are stabbing deep into Japanese positions guarding the Burma Road. Howitzers, also flown in by air, already are in contact with the enemy. Gallant fighters, they receive from General Stilwell medals for valor. Heroes of the opening Battle of Burma. The new United States aircraft carrier Ticonderoga, 27,000 tons of fighting ship, is ready for launching. sixth vessel of her class to go down the ways from this one yard, the Ticonderoga is the 65th aircraft carrier to be added to the United States fleet since the war. A Navy that is today twice as strong in ships and tonnage as it was before the war. Washington, President Roosevelt drives with Vice Admiral Fanar, chief of the French naval mission, to a Navy yard to present a brand new American-made destroyer escort to the people of France. Yes, the Nazis are on the Italian front know only too well that France is not out of this war. And the time will soon come when the Nazis in France will learn from millions of brave Frenchmen, now underground, that the people of France also are not at all out of this war. Good luck, Senegalese, and good hunting. Marshall Islands, target for the greatest American offensive in history. Midway between Pearl Harbor and Tokyo, the Marshalls are 1,240 miles to the Jap base on Truk, 950 miles south of Wake, 1,350 miles to Rabaul, 3,355 miles from Manila, 2,700 miles to Tokyo itself. Behind the most powerful Navy task force ever assembled, troop transports move in to take the Marshall Islands from the enemy. For two months, Army and Navy Air Forces have blasted the target with bombs. For three days, warships have bombarded the islands from the sea. 15,000 tons of bombs and shells, a total without precedent. Point chosen for the assault is Kwajalein in the heart of the Marshalls largest atoll in the world and chief supply station of the group. The Navy's tactics are to drive past smaller atolls and deliver the main blow here, neutralizing the string of smaller islands which surround a 66-mile lagoon, a harbor big enough to shelter all of the navies of the world. Kwajalein Island is hit by the Army, 
Roy and Namur to the north are attacked by United States Marines. These first films to be released reveal the action of the Navy and the Marines. With precise timing, the assault begins. cover the approach to the shores of Roy. 30,000 troops take part in the offensive. Marksmen fire on Japs attempting to escape by swimming an island channel. Mortar fire wipes out enemy resistance on Roy's airstrip. strip is littered with smashed Jap planes. A naked metal framework is all that remains of the hangar. This was Jap headquarters, a base the Japs have held and fortified for 20 years. More than 8,000 Japanese casualties in six days fighting mark the enemy's defeat. For the first time in this war, the Japanese Empire has been invaded by forces of the United Nations. For the first time, Japanese territory has fallen into Allied hands. Enemy strongholds of steel and concrete were torn apart by the terrific concentrated fire. The fall of this vital outpost marks the first break in Japan's wall of defense. Today, overwhelming forces are gathering to drive still deeper. <laughs> 